Hi, my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel. Happy New Year. Uh, it's 2024, which is crazy to think about. Uh, but before jumping in to New Year content, uh, I have a couple things planned, uh, like favorite books of last year, or like most disappointing books of last year, book stats, goals, all of those kinds of things. Before doing that, I did want to wrap up my December reading uh, because I did have a pretty good reading month in December. Uh, technically, I'm filming this on the 31st, but I'm not going to finish anything else tonight, so I might as well wrap it up. To start, uh, let me go through some stats. have my computer over here. I finished 15 books this month for a total of 4,687 pages, which equals an average book length of 312 pages. I read a lot of different things this month, so this is like going to be hard to look at. Nine of the books that I read were fantasy, one of them was sci-fi, one of them was thriller, one of them, no, three of them were romance, and I think that's all of them. Uh, as far as how I read them, I read nine of these books physically, five of them on audio, and one of them as a mix of audio and physically. For the age group breakdown, I read six adult books and nine YA books. And for the star breakdown, I read four three-star books, seven four-star books, and four five-star books. It is always so difficult to say those, I think, I feel like, because it's just listing numbers. Yeah, I don't think I had any DNFs this month, which I guess was good. Wait, that's actually not true. I had one. Um, I did a reading vlog this month where I read eight books. So if you watch that vlog, some of this is going to be repetitive, but if you want to hear about the one book that I DNF'd, I talked about it in that vlog, which I'll have linked down below. Uh, but I don't really feel like I need to mention it in this one, this video, just because I literally got like 15 pages in. So no need to spend any more time on that book when I have 15 books to talk about in this video. So here we go. Starting with lowest, least favorite to most favorite. The first book that I read is the Dark Angel by Meredith Ann Pierce. This is a kind of older fantasy book that was recommended to me by a friend. Uh, it follows a girl who is taken by this vampire dark angel being and is told that she is going to be like the caretaker for his 13 brides. And she kind of has to figure out, how do I do that? Why am I stuck here? Can I do anything to get out of here? And that's the book. I ended up giving it a three stars. It, I don't know, it's kind of a romance, but it didn't really make sense as a romance to me. There were just like a lot of things that happened that were unrelated to the romance, and then the kind of conclusion just felt weird with that. I don't know, it just, if it was published today, I would definitely dislike it more, but considering it came out in the 80s, I believe, considering that I understand why it is the way it is. The Dark Angel himself, you barely saw him in this book, so I'm not sure if he- it is a trilogy, which I won't be continuing, but I'm not sure if you get to see him in the future books and that kind of endears you to him towards him more, but for this book, I didn't like him or have any sort of really feelings towards him because he's barely there. Next up, also a three star, is Fire Sea by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. This is the third book in the Deathgate cycle. I have been listening to the series, and while I really enjoyed the first one, I thought the second one was still fun, but not what I was expecting. This one was what I was expecting, but wasn't fun, if that makes sense. So the first four books in this series are kind of unconnected. Uh, a couple of the characters are the same, but for the most part, completely new cast of characters, completely new worlds. So going into the second book, I was not expecting that, and that kind of jarred me, but I still had kind of a fun time with the story itself. I was expecting that going into this book, but I didn't think the story was as good or the characters were as compelling as in the previous book. So this one ended up only being a three star for me. I think this is the longest so far. How long is this one? It's like 400 pages. And I just didn't 
I wasn't connecting to it. Ultimately not a favorite. I do still want to continue with the series. I'm really, really intrigued to see if it pays off in the end. Like having to kind of restart the story every book, uh, I'm just really curious how that pays off. I do think I will need to kind of pause on that series for a little while and like regroup, read some summaries and kind of get back on track with it. So maybe not anytime super soon, but I do still plan on continuing. The next three star book I have is Five Survive by Holly Jackson. I read this in the vlog as well. This is a YA kind of thriller mystery book. Uh, it follows six teenagers who are going on a... Are they all teenagers? Two of them might be in their early 20s. Going on a trip in an RV and they kind of break down in the middle of nowhere and there's someone who is stopping them in that specific location. No one can help them and they kind of have to figure out why are we being stopped here? How can we get out of this situation? What do they want from us? So I really really enjoyed A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson so I was really looking forward to this one. It unfortunately did not have the same appeal to me as that other series did. The Good Girl's Guide to Murder series is kind of more investigative and less like actiony. This book takes place in one night and I think that that can either really work or really not work depending on the book. And this one didn't really. I really didn't like the main character. I thought that she was just kind of like an annoying person to follow and I don't know just the characters themselves I didn't think were good. I don't know. In a story like this where the characters are the focus of the story none of them were really I was not really rooting for any of them. There's one of them that you're supposed to hate and like a couple of other ones that are kind of just there. I mean there's only six characters and like for two of them to kind of just be like meaningless just felt a little silly but I still would try another Holly Jackson book but yeah this one just it was a fun it was like a fast read and I enjoyed reading it but it wouldn't be one that I would like recommend. My last three star book of the month was The Seventh Bride by T. Kingfisher. I've been really really enjoying T. Kingfisher this year and I thought I was gonna really love this one. I didn't. I didn't particularly have any problems with it but yeah just definitely my least favorite T. Kingfisher so far. It follows a girl who becomes engaged to this duke or whatever? A lord, sorry. She becomes engaged to this lord and uh, kind of notices there are some fishy things happening and she just kind of wants to understand why he wanted to marry her. So when she goes to his manor she kind of finds more evidence that there are weird things going on. So it follows her and that kind of mystery. There was nothing about it that surprised me. Not that I had need to be surprised at every point in a book but this one just felt typical. Uh, middle of the road kind of. It is what it is but I'm glad I read it and I will of course continue to read T. Kingfisher. <laughs> Moving on to four stars. I have another two books that I read in that reading vlog. Uh, the first six books of this wrap up are six of the eight that I read in that vlog which shows how well that vlog went I guess. Uh, the first one is I Am AI by Ai Jang. This is a little tiny short story. I don't even know if this is long enough to be considered a novella but this follows a kind of distant future where technology has gotten better and because of that there are kind of still these issues that we deal with in terms of wealth and poverty and time and healthcare and all those things that are kind of exaggerated by the increases in technology. I thought this was super interesting, super thought-provoking. I would have loved to see a full story out of this world uh, but because it is only like 60 pages or something I just kind of wanted it to be longer and in more depth because I think that the themes that it describes and explores are very interesting and important and relevant. So that's the only reason it got four stars for me is because it wasn't long enough. Next up is the fourth Full Metal Alchemist light novel, uh, Under the Faraway Sky. 
This book actually has two stories in it, Under the Faraway Sky, and the second one is called Roy's Vacation. If you haven't heard of Fullmetal Alchemist, it's about two brothers. So the first story follows the two brothers, um, Ed and Al, and they are in a town where they meet a former friend of theirs. And the second story follows Roy Mustang, who is Ed's commanding officer in the army. Uh, and he is kind of forced to take a vacation. Uh, I thought these were both really fun stories, really captured the characters really well. Because Fullmetal Alchemist is a manga, and this was words, novel, I think the author does a really good job of capturing those characters because it's not the same author that writes these books as who wrote the manga. So I think that the author just does a, such a good job capturing the essence of the characters and translating that into a novel format rather than a manga format. So I really enjoyed this one. Just like super silly, but also some kind of deeper moments. Next up, I have two four star T Kingfisher books. Uh, I'm going to talk about The Hollow Places first because I think I liked this one less than the other one. Uh, T Kingfisher writes some horror stuff, which this is my first venture into that. <laughs> so this book is about a woman who gets divorced. She goes back to live at her uncle's house, which is also like a, like, I want to say a cryptid museum, but what's the word? Like a weird stuff museum. <laughs> what are those called? Like, you know what I mean? Like a, a weird stuff museum. <laughs> so basically your uncle has a museum full of stuff that he's collected. She finds a hole in the wall there and goes through it with a friend of hers and they find some very unsettling things. So I listened to this book on audio and that was a bad idea because most of the time I listen to audiobooks is either when I'm getting ready in the morning or when I'm laying in bed at night. So this was a little bit spooky for me, like especially like at night when all my lights are off and in the morning when it's still dark outside, like listening to this. Also looking in the mirror listening to this just felt weird. Like I was gonna see something in the mirror behind me. Cool. <laughs> so I definitely thought this was spooky. I am a chicken though so I don't know if it would be scary to other people. I definitely like the kind of fantasy elements of this one. I thought it they were just creepy. I just thought this was fun. Kind of like thriller horror books don't necessarily like stick with me after the fact but I had a good time reading it. And I have another one of her horror books that I'd be interested to try. And I know she had at least two of them come out in the past year or two. So I'd be interested in giving those a try as well. The other one, which I just finished recently, was A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking. This follows a young girl who works in a bakery and her magic can kind of help her bake. But one day she finds a dead body in the bakery and she is accused of murdering that person and kind of sets her on this quest to clear her name and figure out what is going on in the city that she lives in. I thought this was cute and a fun time, but yeah, again, not my favorite from T. Kingfisher. I really enjoy the kind of worlds, the fantasy worlds that T. Kingfisher creates. The world in this book felt similar to some of the other worlds that she has created, which I really like. That kind of, I don't want to say typical fantasy city, but that's kind of what I'm thinking of when I'm reading, uh, but just full of like kind of quirks that make them interesting. So like the, how the magic works, everyone has different magic uh, and it works in different ways, which I liked. But yeah, this definitely reads a lot younger, though there are certain things that are a little bit darker. Uh, so I think that, that that's kind of what I said about The Seventh Bride too, is it's a, a younger character. So it, it felt a little bit younger and there's not like a cast of characters that you're following because my two favorites by T. Kingfisher so far are Nettle and Bone and the Clockwork Boys and both of those follow like a cast of characters on a quest doing something and like those books I think she nails like perfectly and not that she didn't nail this one I just don't think that like a young girl on a quest kind of alone is my style I really enjoy that cast of characters that she creates in the other books but still glad I read this one one of these books I talked about in the vlog and one of them I did not because I finished it today and that would be Electric Idol and Wicked Beauty by Katie Robert. 
This is book, these are books two and three in the, what is even the name of the series? Dark Olympus? Yes. The Dark Olympus series, which the first one was Neon Gods, which was the Hades and Persephone retelling. Electric Idol is Psyche and Eros, which I didn't know anything about and still don't know anything about the actual myth behind it. And Wicked Beauty was a Achilles, Patroclus, and Helen of Troy retelling, which I was so excited to get to. So I did give both of these four stars. Let me talk about this one first. And I listened to both of these on audio, which I have to say, listening to both of these in the same month, I realized that they both have the same narrators for the male and female points of view, which I'm not sure I like. I think they should have different narrators if they're following different characters, but that's just my opinion. Uh, anyway, this one I thought was fun, but I is contrived the right word? I'm gonna look it up to see if it is the right word. There are so many times where I'm editing a video that I, and I used a word that I thought was the right word and then it actually wasn't. Yes, contrived is what I need. I mean. Eros and Psyche have to get married because there were pictures online of uh, them together at some point and Eros's mother like tells him to kill her. So to avoid him killing her, they decide to get married, which <laughs> is, I don't know, that made no sense to me. Uh, like just the fact that she would want her killed, I was like, okay, but I did really like this one. I've said this before and I probably will say it every time I talk about Katie Robert, but I love how inclusive her stories feel. Psyche in this one is a plus size woman. Uh, there are people of different sizes, different races, different sexualities, different gender identities. Like, I like all of that and I really appreciate how much time Katie Robert puts into that. Also because these are very uh, steamy books. She does also put a lot of emphasis on consent and birth control and like just sexual safety in every way, which I just really like. It just feels healthy. <laughs> Wicked Beauty is maybe, I definitely liked more than Electric Idol. These titles all blur together. The titles for these books and the Murderbot books just like, they're just like words that mean nothing related to the book themselves. Anyway, this book, yes. You know what, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I should give this one five stars. I don't know, it was a fun time. So I said that I had no knowledge of Psyche and Eros, but this one is about Achilles, Patroclus, and Helen, which I do have more of a knowledge of. So like the dynamic between Achilles and Patroclus, Patroclus, how do you say his name? Can you say it any way you want? I don't know. Um, but the dynamic between them, I understood. So it was interesting uh, in regards to that going into this book. And this one actually has a plot. So in this series, uh, there is the city of Olympus. And there's these 13 people who represent like the 13 main gods in Greek mythology, I think, who rule the city. And some of these titles are passed down hereditarily <laughs> and some of them are either earned or given. So the title of Ares, I think, is up for a new person to take that spot. And in order to do that, they need to go through these trials. So the trials are the main thing that is driving this story. The trials did feel very Hunger Game-esque to me, but that was fine. Uh, so it also follows Achilles and Patroclus, who are in a relationship at the beginning of this story, and Helen, who gets involved with both of them. And that was the part I was excited to see. When I heard that this was about the three of them, I was like, sign me up. And that did not disappoint me at all. I really, really like the dynamics between the three of them, how they each have a different relationship with each other. I really like that. And this was the first book in this series that has had me like wondering how it was gonna end because like Wicked, whatever this is, Electric Idol, for example, 
they're already married because it's like a contract marriage which I love but it's not gonna end with them not being married anymore you know like it's gonna end happily ever after but this one I felt was it gonna end with a happy lady ever after and Achilles and Helen both really want to be the next Aries so obviously only one of them can do that so I was very curious how that kind of plot would end and like what the actual resolution would be. I would say so far the books have been fairly unconnected but this one kind of dropped hints of bigger problems in Olympus that could be explored in future books so I'm curious to see how those play out. I yeah I quite enjoyed this one. Maybe I should give it five stars. I will say do not pick up the series if you don't want to read very very long sex scenes. There was one in this book or maybe even two that was three chapters long. So keep that in mind if that's not your cup of tea. The last four star book I read was the last book that I read in my reading vlog and that was My Happy Marriage. This is the light novel that got turned into a manga that got turned into an anime and the anime is what I watched and then I read this because I love the anime. It follows a girl who basically is kind of in a Cinderella situation. Her father gets remarried after her mother dies, has another daughter, uh, so her half-sister, and her half-sister and her stepmother are terrible to her. She is treated like a servant and suddenly they tell her that she's gonna get married off to this man who has had all of his other marriage proposals kind of like fall apart because he's apparently not a nice man. So they send her off to marry this guy hoping that she just basically never comes back and she's not their problem anymore. And it turned out, turns out that he's actually not mean. He is very nice. <laughs> so she kind of has to learn what it feels like to have someone care about her, which is like so sad. But I really like the romance in the series and it is set in kind of like early 1900s Japan. It's a different world because there is a magical element to it, but it kind of has like, 1900s is like maybe a little bit past that. Um, like there is some like, I think there's phones. I don't even know when the phone was invented, whatever. There's like cars and stuff and you can see people in like Western suits, but then most people still wear like their traditional Japanese clothing. So I think that that kind of mixture of cultures in the setting is really cool and I really like both of the characters. So I really enjoyed this. I am really excited to read more of this series. I would say that this got about halfway uh, into what the anime covers. So I'm excited to reach the end of what the anime covers and go further on because the development of their relationship is very nice. And I also really like it because in a story like this, you would think that it would be first person, but it's actually third person, which I was like a really pleasant surprise for me because you get to see uh, both points of view and just other things happening in the world besides just these two characters. So I really enjoyed it. I already have the second one, so I will be reading that one imminently. <sighs> okay, moving on to my five star books. The first one, this one I have been meaning to read for a while and I actually almost read it in that reading vlog, which I should have done because I stayed up late to read this. Actually, I stayed up late to read two of these books, so that I'm gonna talk about in the five stars. That would be A Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangyu Mandana. This is like a contemporary fantasy romance and I just thought it was adorable. I had heard Elle from Elliot Brooks talk about it and I thought I was going to enjoy it based on that because we have similar reading tastes, but I didn't anticipate how much I was going to like it. Uh, it follows a woman who is a witch and she's kind of always been taught to stay away from other witches and not let her secret get out, so she really hasn't formed any close friendships or anything. She always is moving around and she gets hired to teach these three young witches who have like no other witch role models and kind of teach them to control their magic and all that. And so she moves into this house with some of their other caretakers and it's just so wholesome. There is a very nice little romance in this too. And 
I love that aspect of it. I love the kind of like found family aspect of it. Thought it was really cute, really wholesome. Really enjoyed this. I would definitely read more from this author. Next up is a the only graphic novel on this list or manga. I didn't read any manga this month, uh, which is okay because I had so many novels to get through. I had been waiting for this for a long time. And that would be Heartstopper Volume 5 by Alice Oseman. I have been loving Heartstopper since they first started publishing these volumes. So I've been really looking forward to this. I love the Netflix show. I think it's like an amazing addition because they do change some things, but uh, just the story of these two cutie pies uh, follows Nick and Charlie. Charlie is an openly gay boy in his school. It's an all boys school. He was bullied for that and it's kind of a little bloop a little bit of an outcast and he has a crush on Nick who is this rugby playing guy who he never thinks could like him back. Um, they slowly become friends and then more throughout the series. So yeah, I really like this one. There are some things that happen I think in the fourth volume that are improving in this one and they have some other challenges to face as they are growing up more because they're both in high school or the British equivalent of that. Just so good. There are no cuter characters than Charlie Spring and Nick Nelson. Like, just adorable. I thought this was going to be the last volume, but there's actually going to be a sixth, which is good because Nick and Charlie are on the spines. And it would be a shame if it ended with five and not a matching Nick to match this Charlie. So, so good. Last up is a duology that I read this month. Divine Rivals and Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. I am late to the game on reading Divine Rivals. I read it at the beginning of this month. Actually, I said I only stayed up to read one of these. I stayed up late to read this book. I read this book in one day. I didn't think that these were going to be as good as they were. It was so good. Both of these were so good. Though I do think I like Divine Rivals more than Ruthless Vows. Anyway, if you have not heard of this series, it is a young adult, which is shocking to me, young adult fantasy series duology. Uh, it follows a girl who is a works at a newspaper and there is a war between two gods going on. She decides to become a frontline reporter uh, because her brother is fighting the war and she hasn't heard from him. Uh, she has this enchanted typewriter where she types a letter, puts it in a wardrobe, it'll send it to the person, will send it to someone else, and that someone else has been replying to her letters and they have a bond going on. I loved it. I really truly did. I had only seen A River Enchanted Around by Rebecca Ross and I thought it was another mythology retelling but I'm not sure if that's actually true but I got that vibe from the cover and so I was like not interested in it and then I was like I don't know if I want to read this one because she wrote that one <laughs> but now after I read these two I want to read everything that she's written. I think her writing is so good I think I've said this before, but I don't normally notice writing. Like, that's not something that usually stands out to me or detracts uh, from experience for me. But I noticed the writing in these books. It was so good. Especially when there's this kind of, like, letter component involved and, like, characters that are working as writers. You really have to nail that element of the book, and she absolutely did. There are just things that are so poetic in the series and the love story and, ugh so good. This is definitely a series that I see myself going back to reread like just as like a comfort series for a long time because it was just really good. I do think that the ending of Ruthless Vows was a little bit too fast for me but overall I did also really love it and I of course gave it five stars because it's at the end of this list but yeah if you see me reading some Rebecca Ross next year those books are why. <laughs> but this was a really long wrap up because I had so many books to talk about. Normally when I have like 15 books, it's like, oh, well, 10 of these were all manga from the same series. But no, these were all like individual books to talk about. So if you stuck with this, thank you. If not, <laughs> you're not listening to this anyway. So 
But what was your favorite book that you read in December? Um, and do you have any thoughts on any of these books? Please let me know down below. But if not, thank you for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye!